Ding ding. Yeah. Uh, nice day. Good market improvement. GameStop came up a little bit. They smashed it a little bit into close, but I would have expected them to hold, try to hold 150. There's a lot of open OI here that's in the money at close, which could create more Nave Gex for tomorrow. What's interesting is our Nave Gex is staying positive, even though we're in a price decline, uh, which means that institutional long interest in farther dated calls has just continued to build, right? So we talk about how longs are repositioning during this phase D of Wyckoff. And and this is this is kind of the effect we're seeing of that, is we're seeing this growth and gamma exposure because of this long side interest that's normally absent on GameStop's price declines. It is super positive, but it's it's not positive right this instant, but it's positive in the next couple months, next well, next few weeks even. It could be a May OPEX, but you know, they could do what they did in Feb OPEX, right? And just smash expectations and kick the can. Now that we know that they're capable of doing that, it's something that we have to be prepared for. And whatever strategy we approach the next long position with GameStop. And one of the reasons I'm being so dissuasive of positive price action is because YOLOing now is dangerous and people will do that. Um, so it's not that I'm not bullish on GameStop in the near term, um, but it's it's that there's time to wait, and options are all about timing. And sometimes it's real hard to nail that timing, but when you do, it's worth it. We need you here tomorrow a.m. I didn't wink. There was no wink. I'm, I'm serious. Will the next fee phase be met with another entropy swap buy-in? We'll see that, or have we? Um, they're going to try to crush volatility uh, until they can enter an entropy swap, right? Um, they've probably, they probably burned out their other entropy swap on the run to 200, right? That That's what it was there to protect them against. Um, they'll be trying to re-enter one. And so this IV crush, this downward price action, these are all what they need to do to push entropy down to the point where they can get a counterparty. Not YOLO time. Tomorrow's Thursday, but also the last trading day of the week. The markets are closed Friday. It took them it took them a while to find a counterparty on the entropy swap in this last cycle. Um you know it could be harder now, even. So be patient. We didn't even break yesterday's peak today. I know we're up, which is nice. Um, but, you know, that's what we're expecting, right? We're expecting to move, you know, down and up through this cycle. And when we start to see a higher, a higher high, that could be indicative of a move up. And it's, it, we came very close, uh, only 12 cents off the previous high. If tomorrow we break a higher high, like if we see a dip into morning and we break a higher high, uh, that could indicate a reversal. Um, so that's a point at which we would start watching for um, the end of phase D to start playing out. If we're starting to see higher highs moving out of this, you know, flattening out of our price action um, over the next few days, um, that could be that could be positive, right, and indicate you know this expected move into phase D of Wyckoff. And this requires a lot of institutional interest, right? But um, if you look here, like that's that's essentially what this is, this breakout that occurs as it moves into phase E. Um, and we didn't see it here, right? Like we kept we've kept trending down, but you know, a break higher in this trend, a move to a higher high, which would kind of look like this, could indicate a shift out, right? So we'll we'll watch for this, um, but right now still lower, still more likely to trend down than up. All right, that's all. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning, 9 a.m.